Hey everybody, it's Kim, and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Hi everybody, it's Kim. It is actually Monday, so this is Kim of the Future to tell you all about today's video. So I have accumulated many books over 2020, and you know, I'm okay with that. I think 2020 was a stressful year and we all coped with our stress in different ways and mine was to buy a lot of books and I was supporting a lot of small businesses but now I have more books than I know what to do with. But the truth is I want to really, I really do want to read them all. I did go through my shelves and didn't find any I was ready to let go of just yet. So today's video is all about my 2021 TBR. My initiative here is to wrap all the books that I've already purchased that still need to read and use them throughout 2021 as gifts to myself. And every month, Dan, my husband's going to pull a couple of those wrapped books off the shelves. I will open them and it'll be a complete surprise what I'm going to read. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited that this is a good way to get through my TBR. There's... There are about 80 books on this TBR. So I would have to read, you know, 12 times eight is 96. So I would have to read anywhere from six to nine books a month just to get through the amount of books I still have to read. So I think this is a really good initiative for me. And I'm super excited to show you guys what two days of wrapping a lot of books looks like.
I made it through 14 books, 8 memoirs, and 6 special topics before I ran out of wrapping paper. So tomorrow I'll go to the store and get more. But that's basically the little system. So there are... There are actually four categories. I've been breaking up my TBR books. Memoirs, single topics. That would be like butter, the history of the pawpaw fruit. Then I have history, which is like the global history of chocolate or something like that. And then world and travel would be something like, let me find a book. Um, Edward Bear's The Food and Wine of France. And this is like one writer who travels France and eats food and wine quite literally. So the idea is that there's a genre of people going on journeys because they want to explore and learn things. And I think that's different than food history. And I think that's different than single topics. Anyway, they're my categories. It's my TBR. You can't tell me I'm wrong anyway. So haha, -ha! that's all for now. More soon. So I actually found one more piece of wrapping paper on the floor. So I made it to the end of day one with eight memoirs, and eight special topics. I had meant to also wrap this pile, and then I can also take you to, pardon the mess, actually I don't care, judge me all you want, all, minus this top shelf, all of these books eventually are going to be wrapped. And since I'm over here, I will show you the books that are not going to be wrapped. So. Spoiler a little bit, but this shelf are the books I have so far acquired in the month of December. So I want to have them in a wrap up and then I'm going to wrap them. Except for these bottom four books. These have come from um, University of Chicago Press and Rakuten Press. And since they're arts, I want to respect the publishers who so graciously gave me these books and keep them open so I can rotate and read them whenever I want. This shelf here these are books that are outside of food writing. I have a couple of just fiction books here. I promised Leslie I would read Salt and I need to read it by the end of the year for the nerdy narrative. And then these are more books in the edible series, these little short guys. I would put them together. They don't fit on the same shelf right now. And then these are books by uh, BIPOC black authors. So obviously how to be an anti-racist I'm still getting through. I got these books because I bought a limited edition bag from Semicolon Bookstore in a partnership with Tommy Til Hill figure, excuse me, and these books came in it. And I always want to push and diversify my reading. So this is the safety zone. I know I'm a mood reader, so I want to have an emergency stack to rotate through. But these other shelves, including all the way down here, are going to get wrapped as part of this initiative. This is that bag I was mentioning from Semicolon Bookstore. Semicolon Bookstore is the only black owned and female owned bookstore in Chicago. So if you wanna support independent bookstores, especially black owned bookstores, highly recommend Semicolon. All of the buttons and pins I just have started to collect on my own. We don't, I'm not such a good collector that we have to go into its own video, but yeah, that's the book. That's the book bag. And this is everything else that still needs to be wrapped. More soon. For you in a, in a day or so. Expedited shipping. <laughs> Sure, I'll do my best. Uh, I'll touch base with you in a day or so. I'll get right to work on this. Why does no one like my hot dog artwork? I like the hot dog. It's, uh, hot. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm weird. They're separate sheets. So, Kim, <laughs> Kim bought a roll of wrapping paper, and like, it turns out, 
It, it, it turns out that um, rather than like a continuous sheet of wrapping paper, it's several layers of a- Several? It's three! It's three fucking sheets of wrapping paper! They charge $20 for this! What the fuck? <laughs> so she got three like two by two sheets of wrapping paper for $20. <sighs> oh no. <sighs> Buy that. And, and I wanted to support a small business, so I was in the small business store where I got the hot dog picture, and I was like, "Oh, wrapping paper! I can probably wrap twenty more books." Ah! <laughs> so Kim's having a day. <laughs> I have eighty books to wrap. I'm gonna mute myself. I need a moment. <laughs> Hi, so it's me back again. It's Sunday night. It is just before five o'clock. So we just got back from the store for the third trip of buying more wrapping paper for this initiative. But I'm currently reading a book called All American Muslim and it's made me very homesick, um, makes me miss my family. So we're doing a little bit of cooking. So I've got saffron rice done. And then we have chicken we need to make. And it, we're using, I went to the Persian grocery store this morning and I got this new fatosh, fatosh, fatosh um, dressing that we're gonna use. And then I have a bunch of different types of Persian cheeses. I have labna, which is kefir cheese. I have halloumi, whipped feta and brick feta. So I'm gonna have a little break, eat this and then get back to wrapping more gifts. By gifts, I mean books, but they're, they're gifts for me. You get the idea.
Okay, 20 books left. We'll cut that out. Okay, 20 books left out of God knows how many and took a mini break because Dan was being, Dan is taste testing the marmalade for the lemon box. So this is orange marmalade with lemons marmalade, marmalade from Quince and Apple. And he also baked gluten-free bread because I have a gluten sensitivity. I'm like, look at this loaf and this bread and this little marmalade. He's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go finish wrapping. Bye. Okay, it is Sunday night and I have finished wrapping all of the books on my TBR. In total, hold on, there are 19 memoirs, 19 that fall under the category that I arbitrarily named history, 16 in travel, and 24 in special topics. There's also one that I wrapped, put on the floor, forgot to label, found it later, and just has a question mark on it. So grand total, there are 79 books on that TBR shelf that are wrapped. And again, this doesn't include any of the emergency books I put back here, like my publish, the books from my publisher, from the ARCs, that I've received as ARCs, excuse me, and then emergency mood reading books that are fiction but don't normally fall within the food space. <sighs> Pardon the reflection from the light. I don't quite care. It's been quite a long day. Okay, so memoirs are pretty self-explanatory for a genre, a category. The history is like the history of corn, the history of extra virgin olive oil. Travel is this kind of nebulous area where, um, gosh, what would we say travel would be? Travel is you have one writer who is studying the history of fortune cookies and this certain journalist is traveling around the world to find more answers um, so that would be travel special topics is a single topic like a whole book about Nathan's hot dogs actually I might have put that one in history um, special topic would be an entire book about oh taco USA a book all about tacos um, another might be the history of chocolate the history of sugar and its influence in the colonial America and in the Caribbean and etc. So special topics also became a nebulous world for books about clean meat and the future of meat processing in the United States. My cat is having a temper tantrum behind me because Dan is unloading the dishwasher and loading the dishwasher and every time 
He screams. Don't know why. So pardon the cat that you see running around. He's in for bonus footage. Bonus footage. Cat screaming. Coming soon. Um, so special topics also include lots of anthologies that I have or entire works by a certain author. Like I have an entire book for, by MFK Fisher. It's all of her books put together in a super tome. So I kind of made special topics a little bit vague, but what I didn't want to do is create too many categories. So I have four categories here. Each month I will pick four books off the shelf. Now you're probably going, Kim, did you, did you think ahead and make the wrapping paper match each category? No, I didn't. I ran out of wrapping paper. It took four different, three different types of wrapping paper and four different rolls of tape. So I kind of gave up with time, but I can still try. I can I kind of have a general idea of what's what, but the idea is pull four books a month. If I have 79 books, 12 times eight is 96, 12 times, yeah, 12 times eight is 96. So 12 times seven is 84. So I would need to read seven books a month to actually completely finish this TBR shelf without buying any new books next year. That is a really ambitious goal. I'm gonna start with four because I'm a mood reader and then allow myself to go back to the shelf or tap into any of these emergency books. The final part, the obvious question, Kim, are you going to buy books next year? Yes. Uh, do I breathe? Yes. I do wanna think ahead and think about how I can better utilize my public library. Well, I'm still a big advocate. I'm gonna always advocate for my small bookstores versus Amazon. I can also do my part to advocate for the, the library. And if I love the book, I can buy the book after. So I do wanna get into using the library. It's a big goal for me for 2021. And maybe instead of buying books, buying less books from these small independent bookstores, I am thinking about creating a series on my channel where once a month or there'll be at least one video a month where I advocate a small business or a small bookstore and put that on my channel. So it's exposure. Obviously I'm a small booktuber. I'm not saying it's going to change the world, but Hey, that's an alternative way to advocate for something I am passionate about. Okay. That's everything. I'm exhausted. That's the end of this video. If you like what I'm doing, let me know in the comments below. Am I insane? Probably, but I'd still love to hear from you. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. Happy holidays. I hope you're well. Please wear a mask and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.